We have one more important question to discuss, the detention of Nadia Savchenko, because the last week the new facts in this case have appeared. So, one of Nadia Savchenko's kidnappers, Pavel Karpov, assistant of Russian president's advisor Vladislav Surkov, detained Ukrainian told about that during her last evidence in the court, which took place in Rostov-on-Don. She said that Mr. Karpov was a driver of the car by which Savchenko was transferred to Russia. The court added photos of Mr. Karpov to the case. More details about case of Ukrainian pilot what, watch in our following story. Yes, this person. I asked the court to pay attention to this photo. This person's name is Pavel Karpov. He is well known for you. In LPR he was designated as coordinator of presidential administration. On the 1st of February, Nadia Savchenko began to give last evidence of her case, which included loud statement about involvement of Russian politician Pavel Karpov into her kidnapping. On his turn, according to Russian online media Kamersant, Mr. Karpov answered. I saw her on TV 4,000 times, but never in real life. Unfortunately or fortunately, so her statement is either a mistake or a lie. Or maybe it is an intentional effort to disorient the court. It is difficult for me to say what I did on that day, on 23rd of June, but I feel that I was not in Luhansk at that time. The defense team of Ukrainian pilot has revealed phone conversation with alleged participation of political consultant Karpov with Luhansk terrorist Valery Bolotov. On this record, the nationality of woman pilot of the helicopter is discussed, who earlier fought in Iraq. Nevertheless, the court refused to interrogate both of them. Today we found out the main thing, the last for me, the representatives of presidential administration of Russia acted toward Nadia Savchenko's detention. It is not important that they are former representatives of Kremlin. In common, it is Surkov's circle, circle of President Putin advisor for Donbass and Ukrainian issues, who took part in Savchenko's kidnapping. Given that it is prohibited for Savchenko to use maps in the detention center, she instead painted the map with the place of her detention by herself. These pictures were added to the case. Innocence evidences, which were provided by the defense, were denied by Kurt. In particular, materials on involvement of Lugansk terrorist leader Igor Plotnitsky and colonel of Federal Security Service Sergei Pochichuev were not added to the case. Also, Russian court refused to take into account evidences of mobile connection expert. His data proved that due to the absence of mobile net on the territory where Savchenko was, she couldn't be a center. Advocates also gave evidences that Ukrainian pilots could not reach the tower physically from where, according to the side of accusation, Savchenko directed the fire upon journalists. The decision which will be made by Donetsk court is transmitted from the top, from the presidential administration, in fact from those people who kidnapped Savchenko. It is why the only one possibility to save her aside from the sentence and from the heaviness of the sentence from 20 to 25 years of imprisonment is political negotiations with Russian high-level officials. Russian terrorist detained Nadia Savchenko in June 2014. On this video we can see how they interrogated Savchenko. What is your idea? I gave the oath to people to defend Ukraine and its territorial integrity. Defend people from whom? To defend from the external invasion. Invasion from where? From Russia. You think that here is Russia? I heard you say that you are from St. Petersburg. Nadia Savchenko fought as a volunteer on the east of Ukraine. She was detained in Luhansk's region and transferred to Russia. There she is kept in detention center. The captive is accused of murder of Russian journalists and illegal crossing of the Russian border. Ukrainian pilot denies all accusations. She gave her first evidences on 22nd of September 2015. One more time I claim that I was kidnapped from Ukraine and transferred to Russia by force. I claim that the investigation departments of the investigation committee who are charging me now were involved into my kidnapping. 
that I did not see where those journalists were. And I never knew those journalists. As a mark of protest towards her detention, Nadia Savchenko announced the third hunger strike. Since 7th of December 2015, she has lost more than 18 kilos. In case of judgment of conviction by the court, Nadia told that she would fall back on severe dry hunger strike. So what will be your short forecast concerning the detention of uh, the Dia Savchenko? Because right now we see that so high figures were mentioned in this case. And we, it is obviously that uh, it is not a just a procedure, court procedure. Well, of course, it is the political show. And uh, the, basically the script has been written by someone in Kremlin. And no matter what kind of evidence uh, the defense team and uh, Madame Savchenko will present in the court, it will not change the... Uh, final conclusions or the decision of court and she will be uh, sentenced uh, and of course the court will deny will ignore the evidences of life even the principles of, uh, of, of law nevertheless it is very important what's been done by by madame Sauchenko and her defense team because sooner or later we will bring to the justice all those who basically ordered the russian invasion in ukraine who arranged it uh, who organized it and those who committed uh, terrible crimes against international law uh, human rights, so on, so on, so on. And more we know about those people involved, better it is for the future justice, which would be served at some point. So this later. dissension is still have an international scale, and uh, international okay. community will consider uh, this part when they will, 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 well, they, when they will find the uh, resolution of this Russian aggression. Well, again, this case has nothing to do with the law. And um, from the legal point of view, the international community expects, and Ukrainians, and even Madame Sarchenko expects nothing from this, from this court. We need it to be finished just to receive the sentence and to start the negotiation and to start the discussion over the possible format, how Madame Sarchenko could be returned back to Ukraine. But again, what's been said by her and by her lawyers, or the evidence presented, it's important, because sooner or later, those evidences will be used in the, another court. A case against the Russian leadership and Russian military who violated the international law and human rights in Ukraine. Well, thank you very much for your visit, for fruitful discussion. It was nice to meet you here. Nice to meet you too.